Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the 2022 Garden State Film Festival, uh, celebrating its 20th anniversary. My name is Ming Chen. CJ Cullen. Sophia haber Bra. And uh, I have another group of amazing filmmakers, uh, Coogan's Way. And uh, I think this is something near and dear to our hearts. We go to a yeah. lot of bars. Uh, we, <laughs> Especially you know, the Irish. Uh, 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 your last name is Cullen, <laughs> Cullen. correct? So you're, you're Irish. But uh, please yeah. introduce yourselves, my friends. I'm um, Glenn Austin Anderson. I'm, right, right, uh, up to your, right up to your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, Glenn Austin on. Anderson. I'm the director and producer. Amazing. Uh, Peter Walsh. I was one of the owners of the bar, Coogan's, and uh, had wonderful partners who aren't here right now. But 35 years, never had an argument. I wow okay. Well, yeah. I, that, uh, I usually alcohol spurs arguments. We'll get uh, sometimes that, they though. stop it if you drank the amount we did. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, go to, you go to sleep. You're not know, getting into an argument. And I spent a lot of my team's money at Coogan's. I, br- I brought the Duke University track team up there for 25 years consecutive and got Amazing. to be good friends. So with because guy. of you, they're able to make the movie. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Yes, he's been a great friend and supporter of the film yeah. from day one. So for sure, we uh, had to bring him in on the interview. I, uh, tell me, tell me about the film. So um, it's the story of a little bar and restaurant in a very rough and tumble neighborhood. Uh, 1985, early 90s, not the uh, warmest and fuzziest time in upper Manhattan. Uh, (laughs) And this little Irish pub owned by my friend and his uh, colleagues um, became a force for good in in a rough neighborhood. And um, come 2018, they had a big fight for... Uh, after a massive rent hike, a rent hike that um, would shock most people, I mean, to the tune of a half million dollars a year rent hike. And they, um, it brought out the community. It brought out, let's just say, some A-list stars okay. um, to say, hey, we got to fight for this place. Um, I'm a film professor down in Washington, D.C., and I'm sitting at home going, Someone should do a documentary about this. And then I said, wait a second. (laughs) I'm a documentarian. Right. That guy should be me. Yeah, that guy should be me. So um, we started that, and we had every intention of telling a very particular story. Um, We filmed a closing sequence of this guy getting all dewy-eyed, saying, I never thought anybody really cared. I never thought the community was so invested. It was so wonderful. And we had a complete film, and then um, March 2020 happened. Right. And we threw out the last eight minutes of the film and redid the ending. And, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it too much, okay. but let's just yeah. say it was a different ending than everybody intended. Okay, no. for sure. Yeah, but it's, um, it was a, it, I kind of hinted at it there. It's a special place. And okay, yeah. It's very important that, um, it's very important to me on a personal level that we were able to the essence of the place on film yeah i mean i think we all have those places i, I think like i mentioned I, me, mm-hmm. me and cj we we do uh, uh, we purposely seek out uh rough and tumble places shall we <laughs> yes. say because they're we more find interesting some nice ones that we really fall in love with yeah right. and i feel you know uh, no matter where i travel a lot and what what do i do i look for the i was like where's the best slash worst dive bar in this town <laughs> Because I'm going to go there. I know I'm going to get a warm welcome. Well, this was a dive neighborhood, but not a dive bar. Okay. This, was, this yeah. was a classy, classy place. The, the remarkable thing about Coogan's was, yes, it was an Irish pub nominally. But the clientele, it was a uh, huge track and field crowd. Um, okay. Because there is a major indoor track and field uh, facility literally in the back room. Right. Um, uh, the Armory Foundation was right in the back room. Um, the... Uh, um, the local community was African American and uh, Dominican American. Okay. So you had that a uh, clientele. You had the people who uh, were just Irish Americans wanted right. to go to an Irish American pub, and you would think that there were these, there would be this tension. There wasn't. There was a hospital around the corner, and this was the 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 place that everybody went to, you know. After uh, you know, hey, go visit grandma. She's sick. Let's go get a good meal. You'd yep, go here. Go to Coogan's. Everyone was welcome. Everyone had a good time, and um, you know some of the stories I most love about the place was that um, it was sort of this neutral ground in the in Washington Heights roughest, toughest times yeah. with the drug dealing, because no one wanted to mess with the place, because you don't mess with the best party in town. No, exactly. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, 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 you and you know, and Glenn became part of our family. It was. Um, I think that's how good he is in the art of documentary, yeah. which I'm a foreigner too. I mean, it's I love movies, right. uh, but. He became part of a family where you didn't notice the camera was on. 
And you know, you became he for two years. All of a sudden, you turn around. And he said, "Oh, I'm being followed by something again." <laughs> and but he was just amazing at it. But the key to the movie, I thought, were his interviews, where he got people from stars like Jared Harris, yeah. and he got um, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, oh, yeah. and he yep. got Luis, his father, yeah. and he got um, I mean, just amazing to open up and be relaxed. And that was his genius. I mean, you can be a documentary, but. Then he does the common person who was, you know, the reflection of who my part yeah. is in our way. We're, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. we're just average common. Irish American was, uh, you know, we all have three children, <laughs> but we all cared and we were raised where our ancestors, our grandparents, and sometimes our parents were migrants to this country, immigrants. So to see the new immigrants, the Dominicans, right. the Hispanics, Asians, all over, we, we were probably the most integrated bar in America 35 years ago. And people would come in, say, at the, from the hospital, a white person would yeah. walk in, and they would like tense up because they'd never seen blacks, right. Dominicans. Yeah, in a, all a, bars out, are intimate yeah. situations. Yeah. And, you know, I, someone asked me just recently, and I, Glenn and I have talked about this, you know, where's this thing come? What makes an Irish-American bar special? And it's, you come as a stranger and you leave as a friend. Right. And it's, it's a thousand welcomes. You can go anywhere in the world now. And the Irish pub is in the character of those places. I don't care if it's France or China. They've all learned to make a place a welcoming, warm, safe, number one. Yum. And then picture an Irish pub, turn of the century. You came in, you don't have enough money for a, a fire in your own house, your own you know, thatched roof, Pete. You're... A, yeah. a pig farmer. You come in, you're keeping warm, and all of a sudden you're finding out the prices of barley and how much is of the oats yeah, and yeah, what's a yeah, pig's yeah, yeah. Then you find out, oh, is uh, Patty's uh, daughter getting ready to get married? Right. Maybe my son Liam. And you're finding out where the British soldiers <laughs> are guarding the bridge. Right. And you're told you're not allowed to speak your own language. You can't be educated. And they turn these people into the greatest oral tradition that ever has appeared on earth. And if you look at this, uh, what goes on with rap music and the African-American experience, yeah. you see a lot of what happened to the Irish in their own land. You know, it wasn't pure slavery. It was sophisticated. They were turned into slaves without knowing they were right. slaves. And that's why their rebellion was a, a very courageous thing. But you take that pub and all of a sudden someone pulls out a tin whistle. And someone plays a fiddle. Oh, yeah. It's always I mean, you talk about yeah. the mixture of culture with yeah. the traditional. And then you look at what's produced from this country. The greatest poets, the greatest novelists, uh, James Joyce, w William Butler Yeats. Then you look at Sheridan. You look at uh, the Shore. You look at, tell me a good English writing um, uh, playwright, and I'll show you an Irishman. Yeah. They turn Irish filmmakers. Into, right? I mean, yeah. but the oral tradition is what went on its way. And this is why Glenn captured. Yeah. And he did it all with the words of people like the, the thing I think Glenn also did so well was taking a story that you could see in other places, but showing how he, Coogan's story was a little bit on the unique side. Right. I mean, here in Asbury Park, right, we had a deteriorating neighborhood. We had racial violence. Yep. All mm. that happened in Washington Heights, too. Yeah. But uh, Asbury Park built themselves back, and now they're, they're a great destination. Again. Yeah, absolutely. Washington Heights, though, did it around one building. It was really bleak. When I first <laughs> yes. went up there, I mean, I ran at the armory, the, the track facility yeah. behind Coogan's. Uh, you know, in high school, there was no Coogan's, and there was drugs on the street. It was right. dangerous. Our, my parents would shudder when they found out I would take my little trip from suburban, safe suburban Long right, Island to Washington to the city. Heights. What are you doing? i got to run meets. You know? But then when, when the bar opened, and, and Peter and his colleagues did such a good job, you know, attracting this di very diverse audience yeah. uh there there was a comfort zone in this war zone you know that it otherwise and, and i he showed that so well in it and in the film you see the history and, and the documentation of, of the violence and then the coming together and it's just a really well knit and uh defined story that that uh, i found you know just fascinating and it's a place where i always wanted to bring my duke team so once yeah we found and out you did a safe place to go we ate all our meals there <laughs> and uh that's going against bonded there and uh, uh yeah it probably became a better team there <laughs> oh they're absolutely better team because of the food <laughs> yeah. and oh, sometimes course. other things of course. Um, <laughs> but you know i i want to say i always noticed the duke team walking in because they were bright-eyed and there was there was such a cerebral intelligence about them, and I said to um, Norm one time, Glenn knows this. I said, "Hey, I know this great kid. He's fast. I think he's getting close to a four minute mile in high school." Yeah. He goes, "How's his studies?" And I said, "That's why 
Norb's a great coach. He cared about the kids studying right. before he cared about his the time. Athletics, yeah. And that was a t- that's basic reflection of what Coogan's was. If you came in, if you came into place and you're looking for a job or whatever, by the time you left, you're going to be hooked up. If you came in with a problem that you had with the landlord, you would be hooked up. Right. We, we didn't have to go through the bureaucracy. We knew who the players were. We, we knew Annie, who was the assistant who, uh, for the congresswoman. Okay, we knew yeah, Annie yeah, got yeah. things done. Never call, never call the boss. Always call the person at the desk because right. they go, you know, I take care of that for you. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. And they do it. Give me the five other, minutes. You know, you know something? You. And I, these are common people. And that's what we turned into. When the peace came to Washington Heights between the police and, and the rioters. Well, the police were eating in our front room and the rioters were in the back room. Right. And they basically <laughs> started talking to each other. Yeah. And it was beautiful to see it because they worked it out. And all of a sudden, the next day, it's the straight Yeah, up. that's all, yeah. I love Peter and I don't want this to be misconstrued, but you can probably see how much editing down I had to do. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, not at all. He's very well spoken, though. I, when did you sh- start shooting this? Um, so in uh, 2018, um, so it took me the better part of about three and a half years. Um, okay. Three and a half years to be done. We um, premiered last year in May at the Harlem International Film Festival, which was the perfect fit for us, being about um, that. And you won the award. Yeah, we won the audience award there. The, that festival really celebrates Upper Manhattan and stories about. Um, uptown New York City, okay. Bronx and Uptown New York City. So um, it, to us, that was our Tribeca. That right. was kind of like our speaking to our audience. Um, and we've been, you know, that's almost a year now we've been taking this out. We've been in 11 festivals. Uh, how's it been going so far? It's been going great. We've won two audience awards. We've taken it. Um, we've been in Australia. Okay. Oh, been, I was going to um, say, it's not just East Coast. No, oh, no, no, he's no, talking, to, Ar- he's yeah. talking to Ireland, uh, RTE uh, television yeah. in Ireland. Yeah, we've been it, on so. uh, um, WNET in New York. Yeah. We've been on uh, NJPBS. We've been on WLIW. Uh, we've had a really, really nice run, but... Um, Bringing it here to Garden State Film Festival, um, kind of a crazy story. Um, I, you know, I found out about this festival while we were out at Newport, uh, yep. the Newport yeah, Beach yeah, Film yeah. Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems to be a nexus of uh, oh, yeah. filmmaking. So a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, Grasso were over was there. just <laughs> talking about. Well, Heather. Uh, yeah, Heather's. Uh, Ken, Heather uh, yeah, yeah, Heather's she, network. Heather's. Oh my Heather's goodness. earning her paycheck well, off there, man. Well, <laughs> Good job, at, Heather. Um, Curtain down in Newport. At yeah. our <laughs> after party, uh, Heather and I have a very dear mutual friend. And she came to our, our Coogan's Way after party yeah. told me that, about this festival. And I'm like, my grandparents lived on the Jersey Shore. I'll apply. Uh, I, I'm kind of familiar with this area. Sure. So I'm like, all right, I'll apply. Then I get in, and I'm, I'm excited. So I text Heather, and I'm like, awesome, I'm in, I'm in. Then we get the acceptance packet. And right. I'm not going to believe this. It says, please send the marketing materials to, I'm not going to say the address, to an address in Seagirt. Yes. And, and you know this mm-hmm. address? I it's two doors down from my grandparents' oh, house. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And it's Diane's home. Right. Wow. Diane was my oh, grandparents' Oh, yeah. Diane, Diane Raver. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, he's wow. a local. This is local, man. He's yeah, local yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, like yeah. when I was a kid, like, two doors down was Diane. Right. Um, this is, like, crazy. So, like, she calls me Cousin Glenn now. Um, oh, I mean, you're, me you're in the neighborhood, the man. Time. Yeah, so. As bizarre as it sounds, I'm not from the Jersey Shore, but like I'm kind of Jersey Shore adjacent, and like You're, th- this is a homecoming festival for me. This is going to awesome. be our last festival, and I, I couldn't have it be at a better place. So. I have a question for you guys. Ask Wayne. Johnny Cash. Yes. Yes. Is he looking down at tickets for the wrong movie? He just doesn't uh, look like he's saying, "Uh oh, I'm in the wrong place." Uh, I don't I think, think the Johnny Johnny, Cash room is over there. Yeah. Right? I don't think Johnny Cash needs tickets for a movie. I think they let him in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. He was the owner of this well, hotel for a while. Yeah. The, he was the owner. Part owner. Yeah. He part owner. Yeah. He part owner of this hotel for a while. Hear that train coming? Yeah. Rolling around the bed. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Shot him, man, Marina. <laughs> Once he starts singing, you're never die. really going to get him yeah. to stop. So. We got karaoke <laughs> later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sophia. We might do that. <laughs> yeah. This is such a beautiful story. Like, did you know these things about your, um, like, the people coming in? Did you learn this with the documentary? Or? Yeah. You know something? That's what the documentary did for us. Okay. It, even my children liked me for five minutes. <laughs> it was. All of a sudden, we watched the documentary, and I, there's one point I think he has it. We, did, we just didn't know people cared that much. Mm. You know, you, you, when you run a restaurant, it's about tomorrow. 
It's not about it yesterday. You're not collecting fan meal. You, you're seeing if you can open tomorrow with the food in, the liquor there, the patrons coming, they feel safe. You know, this is, we had no idea. And all of a sudden, he saw the importance. And then he said, you know what's really important? 35 years ago, you were fully integrated where people were scared of each other. And he goes, you started something that worked in a neighborhood that everybody got along. It was like the white, the black, Dominican, Jews, Irish, doctors, nurses, patients. And by the way, if you're ever near a hospital, never go up to a table and say, how are you feeling? Sometimes they tell you. Um, <laughs> right, so right. They, but what happened there was something very beautiful that we didn't know, because we were just doing it. And I'm not doing this egocentrically. We were surprised. We were having fun. I mean, everything I did every day going to work was, I'm going to have fun. Oh, yeah. I got a liquor. I got a good-looking woman coming into a bar. I have a wife I love at home. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, this is not a bad business to be yeah. into. Um, but that's what it was. But he gave us something that we didn't know we had. And that was so pleasing. I'm glad you asked that because we just didn't know it. You know, if you want to boil his film down to its essence, it's a film about hope. You know, yeah. and, and, and that's something we all need to see. Right. You know, especially, especially now. In these times. Especially well, now. yeah, when you see things so divisive, like, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I mean, the, the past president was not uh, something that was a favorite to us or probably any of our, <laughs> okay. our, our patrons, <laughs> right. in a sense. Because we were working on what was, we had in common with each other, not what, what divided us. We were working on things like, you know, I would have a meeting sometimes for whatever, some neighborhood problem, and I would sit down, I go, listen, how many people here have children? I said, you know, let's begin there. We all love our children. I go, let's begin with that. We all love our children. Okay, what's the next problem? And then it, you have that sense of we have too much in common. Let's solve this. And, and if you're a lawyer or you want to be the smartest one in the room, you're not wanted here. We're going to figure it out. It's uh, Diane Raver Diane right just there. walked by. Diane Raver, shout out, Diane Raver. But that's uh, what, what it was. <laughs> Jackie Fortes, yeah, they're all over there. I, uh, when you when you screen tonight, right? Yeah, we're tonight. screening tonight at the uh, bowling alley at eight thirty at the bowling alley. Eight thirty at the lanes. I hope you guys come. Uh, I it's hope a you great come. Venue. We're, we've uh, ticket sales have been going well, but uh, I think there's still uh, a few left. So um, if anybody's uh, watching at home and deciding whether or not to uh, to venture out. Um, we'd love to have you. I mean, it's a movie about a bar. Come on. Yeah, yeah. you can't. You can't Definitely venture out. And it's we're, a we're, great venue. We're having a little Coogan's reunion at the Irish pub right outside the door here. Yeah. Oh, Kim Marie's. Uh, Kim Marie's. Kim Marie's. Kim Marie's. Yeah. 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 Very good food over we're there. We're going to arm right. up. Yeah, good food. and we're going to salute Coogan's over there. Yeah. Um, we've got the old general manager, two of the owners. Then we're going to migrate on over to the bowling alley and watch the film. And I think there's a good likelihood we end up back at Kim and Marie's afterwards. Uh, and then they, you, could, they, you could come back over this way. Yeah, yeah exactly. there might be a secret after party here as well. Although we, we don't make Guinness here. We need Guinness. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can work out the okay. whiskey. Yeah. So they, they, they do a proper Guinness pour at Kim Marie's, hopefully? They do. They do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, and also Glenn be became very close with the with a great guy, John Mashad, who's coming down also for the festival, who's a, a writer for The New Yorker. Oh, wow. And he's doing a book on uh, on us, uh, you know, about the Coogans in this. And uh, they became very close. And you have that great style of New Yorker writing. And now we have a documentary that's not done in that little, the American sense of, like, we have to have a crash scene and then a fire. Right. And then everybody's happy and, and the children goes riding away on a yeah. pony. Yeah. No, Glenn doesn't do that. Okay. Glenn gets into, Real. he doesn't look at the guy drinking the whiskey. <laughs> he looks like the empty shot. Uh -huh. yes. You know, well. he's... he's like he's very fresh yeah. about it, you know? But yeah. he looks at things I don't understand. And we better get going. Yeah, yeah. we have no the Tullamore. I don't know. Oh. Well, yeah. What's I'm, next for you as a filmmaker? So yeah, a, what are you working I'm on? I'm a film professor at Catholic University in D.C. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, next up for me is I'm uh, starting the tenure process, which is going to take oh, me a wow. little while to get through. But, wow, um, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank that's, you, thank you. I, got, I got a couple of months left for yeah, my yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> you guys, you guys got to change yeah, cards. Yeah, so get the start, tenure. Start, get the tenure. Uh, they don't give tenure anymore. Tenure yeah. Promotion process, as it were. But uh, uh, aside from that, um, haven't decided on the next project yet. I've been um, executive producing a couple of commercials. Um, I have uh, some um, consigliere sitting on the couch with me here who have pitched me no fewer than six ideas. Oh, today. of course. So, uh, one about Ashbury Park. Yeah, okay. one, one based in Ashbury yes, Park. I, but, uh, I, I wholeheartedly. What about the DC yeah. area? Yep. Yeah, DC oh, yeah. area. I've got, I've got a lot brewing. Um, I also have a very sweet little four-year-old at home who oh, okay. a lot she needs of her time. She needs her time. So, uh, those are Balance. The, yeah. Balance. Are you selling her? How much does it cost? Uh, yeah, she could fund the next project. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's a very good <laughs> little boy. They but, don't uh, let you do that in this country, <laughs> my friend. Yeah, it's um, 
so I haven't thought about the next project yet. Um, the, my last two projects could not have been more different. Documentary about an Irish pub, and I had a film uh, that I was uh, a producer on with my uh, friend who I referenced earlier. Um, we had a Santa Claus movie on uh, Netflix. <laughs> okay, that's so, very So, like, those were my last two projects. Right. So, um, was it the Kurt Russell one, was it? No, it was uh, Santa Girl with Barry Boswick. Okay. Oh, Playing yeah, okay. carving Santa. <laughs> yeah, I made that with my, uh, my buddy um, Blaine Weaver was the director. Yeah, I saw I that. Amazing. I saw it. It was, it it was fun. It's yeah. fun. We made it on a shoestring budget using mostly students as our crew. So. And that one actress from that, she did a thing for my school, my class. Um, Gen- uh, Jennifer? Yeah, from. Oh, she's great. Yes. She's great. Um, I'm a big fan of her. So. She's a nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse. She's a nurse. Um, the funny part about that film is that um, we kept on, one of the gags in the movie is that she only eats cakes and candy. Yes. But she's also a type 1 diabetic. Oh, so okay. So, like, Doesn't we, really we, mix, had a, but yeah. we had, like, a spit bucket for her to, like, spit <laughs> everything into after it yeah, was she done. Yeah, couldn't consume that. thing would have been, like, uh, quite ill. But, um, yeah, it's a, uh, um, so between those two wildly disparate projects, a movie about, you know, uh, a cocaine-infested neighborhood in the 1980s, right. and a and Christmas Santa movie, movie yeah. with uh, yeah. with the girl from Wizards of Waverly Place. Right, right, I, right. I, I'm looking to. I'm not sure what to do next. So. You'll figure it out. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. girl. That made my. Yeah. Yeah. These I know Blaine. We're going to help him. I know Blaine, and I know her because uh, she did. You know Blaine. She did a video for my class, which was amazing. Uh, one uh, years ago, mm-hmm. many years ago. Remember uh, that one? Are what? you going to Are you going to do the movie on St. Peter's? I should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you should. You should. Yeah, start, now? Yeah, right. so, start now? Yeah, all right. So, yeah, St. Peter's Prep was where all my kids went from. Uh, when uh, well, it's a, it's a, the whole thing, but it's a, mo- it's a movie. Yeah. St. Peter's is a movie. Oh, yeah, now, sure. it's already. Yeah, whatever yeah, happens sure. afterwards, keep going, it's still though. a movie. Let's, let's, sure. let's keep going. Yeah. Well, thank awesome. you so Yeah, thank much. you guys this so much. Um, thank tonight, 8.30, Asbury Lane, yeah, Coogan's Way. We'd love to have us Thank you, good. gentlemen. Possible. Thank you so much. Thanks for like. Hey, by the way, what a great festival this is. It really this, is. I, this is one of the best run festivals we participated in, and you have an ocean. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't beat it. Uh, GF, GSFF.org, uh, come on down. Movie's playing all weekend. We'll Thanks see you in a bit. Awesome.